In this video, massive triangle of doom alert, I'm driving a Peugeot Partner, which is in fact a Citroen Berlingo, a vehicle we really should have got for ourselves as a family. Unfortunately, this is just a test drive, but uh, looking forward to it. So let's quickly do the history. The Berlingo came out in 1996 as a three door van, effectively. Uh, 1998, the Multispace version, uh, Multispace, if you would like a translation. Uh, came out which offered a rear seat and on the uh, French market ones or rather left-hand drive markets you could have a sliding door like so. Uh, UK ones had to use the standard van body so they didn't get sliding doors um, until um, I think 2001 when this model came out uh, which is uh, yeah this is the badge engineered um, Peugeot version so we've come around the back Obviously very square rigged, practical, massively spacious. We've got a huge boot. Oh, we've got a box of some sort in the boot. A Halford's cool box uh, floating around. You could optionally get a little um, roll around basket in your Berlingo, but I don't think the Peugeot's ever came with that. We've got a useful load cover there. There's all sorts of storage because this is a module top. So uh, we, we've got uh, never travel anywhere without your Haynes manual. And uh, some bike goodies up there in that little storage space. And then we've got vents down here. We've got windows in the roof, little glove boxes. That one should probably be closed. Is it broken? Yes, because I think those things break quite readily because French, uh, French interior trim, not the best. Uh, on these earlier ones, the rear seat is uh, split folding, but I don't think you can easily remove it from the car. And the later versions, uh, you could remove the seats very easily for maximum van practicality but yeah massively spacious in here and uh, we'll give the boot a good slam because apparently otherwise the alarm goes off there we go unfortunately the rear wiper broken on this example we will get back to wipers but yeah hugely practical and uh, a, a lineage that goes back all the way to the 2cv vans but we'll have a quick nose under the bonnet uh, cause poor miss hubnut is freezing uh, on camera duty here and we'll talk engine options. This first generation, the M49 Berlingos, only came with two engine options, uh, the 1.4 petrol, or as here, the 1.9 1868cc DW8 diesel. I think early, early Berlingo multispaces could be had with the old XUD 1905, but power output's about the same. It's about 70 brake horsepower. Uh, we'll talk about later engine options once we get on the move, but let's head in. Massive door for easy access um, but yeah it's just uh, you know quite van like but um, nonetheless it's fairly stylish it was always a fairly sty stylish van uh, the Blingo doesn't look car derived but actually it's based on the Citroen ZX Peugeot 306 platform first seen in 1991 that's a very good platform to be based on um, but yeah lots of space really upright driving position look at the height between the seat and the floor you've got that SUV driving position that so many people seem to crave at the moment and that has other benefits as well if we hop into the back it's not like in this prairie there is a pillar uh, the benefit is masses of knee room look so much space with a seat set for me and the rear bench is a bit higher up so i've got a commanding view out the front i've got my module top to play with complete with these air ducts and different ventilation controls extra lights but the rear windows only pop out, they don't wind down. And uh, this one does not have the optional air conditioning. So you might be very glad of those vents, um, given we've got a glass roof going on. I think aircon made a lot of sense in this model. So I've been to Peugeot rather than the Berlingo. Uh, this is actually a high spec Quicksilver. So the only option, there would be an air conditioning button there if you're really posh. But you'll note we've got a stereo slot here. There's actually under this flap, another stereo slot which the owner has fitted this handy drinks holder into. So he's got somewhere to put his drinks. And that's very standard at the time Citroen BX and a few subsequent Citroens had this flap over the stereo, but it's a bit odd, but there's also a stereo here. Not entirely sure what that's about. We've also got the electric window switches mounted here. So easy reach for both front occupants, hazard light, a very electronic sounding hazard warning light system going on. Um, but otherwise, the stalk's easily recognisable to anyone who's driven a Citroen or Peugeot of this period. Up here, we've got some CD storage. 
in that bin and uh, I don't know what this one does. I think it's, is it just overhead shelving? Yeah. And then we've got massive sun visors because you rather need them. But yeah, if you look at the amount of headroom I've got, I mean, I could wear a top hat driving this vehicle. You might say, well, what is the point of that? I don't know, uh, because French. So start the engine, we've got to wait for the glow plugs. And there we go, a decent amount of sound deadening. So the engine actually sounds um, quite far away. And unlike the van versions, there's no reverberation behind you either. We're going to do a little spot of off-roading, so we're going to go and turn around. But yeah, this engine, not blessed for power, but it is blessed with a very flat torque curve. The DW8 was meant to be an improvement of the old XUD engine, a sort of evolution of it, but it wasn't really. And if I was going to buy one of these, this is not the engine I would choose. Uh, it's neither speedy nor all that economical because you have to be ragging it silly all of the time. The 2 litre HDI is very much the one to go for. The later 1.6 HDI available in the facelift models, uh, both those engines. Uh, yeah, much more power, but those 1.6s do have a few foibles, so do be careful. They're good at knocking turbos out, amongst other things. Excellent mirrors, because it's a van. Uh, very light steering, perhaps a little too light. And uh, turning circle, not as good as I hoped it was, but I think we'll just about get around there. There we go. But uh, yeah, driving along this track, one thing that immediately becomes apparent is it rides like a Citroen. It's um, surprisingly smooth, even over big potholes like that so a uh, very well behaved car get out on the open road and we can really open her up unleash the full fury of that 70 brake horsepower oh yeah i feel that or rather don't feel that we've just reached 30 miles an hour i don't need to slow down for the bend because we're not going fast enough but yeah, lovely smooth diesel engine and it is very refined, especially when you compare it with its predecessor, uh, the C15. I say that, the, the uh, C15 remained in production for another um, seven years alongside the Bolingo, I think it was. Uh, no, actually nine years alongside the Bolingo. Very peculiar. But like I say, that lineage goes all the way back to the first 2CV vans of the early 1950s and it can be traced all the way through. It's just, this is the first one that doesn't look like the car on which it is based. I suppose the nose has got a bit of Citroen Zara about it. Very beautiful around here. But uh, yeah, I mean, it handles well enough, but obviously you're sitting quite high um, and the steering is a bit too light for my liking, but very, very competent chassis underneath. One of the best there has ever been, frankly. It's exactly because of cars like the Citroen ZX and the Peugeot 306 that Ford had to up their game with the Focus. But yeah, now we have to go up a hill, my foot is buried to the floor, and it's just inevitable that we will lose speed and have to drop gears, and probably another gear. And uh, yeah, progress, very, very slow. These are very, very sluggish. So the later 1.6 HDI had two um, tune levels available, a 75 brake, which is meant to be, meant to replace this model, and then a, a 90, which had a bit more get up and go, the same power output as the two litre. Like I say, those engines are a little flaky in some ways. You have to really look after them, use the right oil, let the turbos cool down, all that sort of good stuff. But this is a very rare car because the Peugeots only came out in the UK in this combi form in 2001 and later in 2001 or it might have been early 2002 they facelifted it the uh, the uh, Berlingo and partner quite substantially largely because these cars are actually quite dangerous in a crash when Euro NCAP came along these did not do very well so the facelift addressed those shortcomings that's why the front end was substantially reworked and then in that form, the Bolingo and partner continued until 2008. Yeah, now we're on to the third generation of Bolingo. Are they still called partners? They uh. might be. A bit modern for me. But yeah, on a twisty road like this, it's undulating. The suspension's working really, really nicely. And it just feels, it, it's easy to, to hold your speed. Which is good because 
conservation of momentum is everything, so you don't want to slow down. But I think these models really introduced a resurgence of simple van-based family motoring. In France, it had always been a thing. The uh, 2CV vans, the later Acadians, and even the C15s were available with rear windows and seats. It was nothing unusual to the French. But the, the Brits really took to the Berlingo multispace. Uh, Peugeot jumped on the bandwagon with this partner combi and uh, then everyone else followed and now there's a wide range. Vauxhall combos and uh, the Renault Kangoos all jumping on the same bandwagon. Uh, so proof that not everyone wants an SUV. Some people actually want a really practical estate and look at the space in the back of this vehicle. It's just perfect and there's underfloor storage in the back. There's massive door bins which I'm sure Miss Hubner will be only too delighted to show you. There's plenty of storage, really good practical family wagon. Exactly what we should have bought instead of a Toyota Camry with a knackered cylinder head. Oops. But yeah, even though this has got so little power, when you're not climbing up a hill, you don't really notice it so much and it'll sit 70 miles an hour on the motorway all day quite happily. Uh, brakes require a bit of a shove, but are there. But I've just remembered we haven't done the most important test. Uh, so far it may be sounding like a glowing report. So I'd better do this. Oh, tired wiper blades as well. Yes, this is the car with possibly the worst triangle of doom ever seen on a vehicle. This massive triangle here. Just awful. And if we uh, come to a stop, we will inevitably find the dribble of disappointment. This is why I so hate a triangle of doom. Uh, we've got a missed function though, so we can wipe such dribbles out of the way, but I think it would be better to not have such dribbles in the first place. Maybe it's just me. Right, let's have a quick pop into Slanny Lois. The clutch is quite heavy. That was always the thing on these. It's a cable clutch. It's got to do two 90 degree bends effectively to get to where the clutch actually is. Uh, that is a downside um, of these vehicles. I remember well from my Peugeot 306, I always had a really heavy clutch. I didn't like it. There's a later Peugeot partner, by way of comparison. They grew quite a bit uh, with that new version in 2008. But this one still feels quite well put together, I think. It's done 86,941 miles. And uh, it's the odd trim rattle, but by French standards, I think that's actually quite good. And yeah, around town, it, it's just nice, relaxing. You don't have to get the revs up because there's no point. There's no, not much power further up the rev range. So you might as well just potter around. Uh, we're doing 20 miles an hour in third gear at 1500 revs. And it's quite relaxing. Excellent visibility. So it's an easy car to place. Yeah, it's a lot, lot to be said for them as we pass through the pretty little town of Slyne Lois. So that was the Peugeot partner or pretty much a Citroen Berlingo. Um, yeah, I think we really should have bought one of these. They make cracking family transport. And like I say, these pre-facelift ones, Berlingos and partners, getting very rare now. I forgot to mention, when these first came to the UK, they had a full length um, soft top on the Berlingos to try and make up for the fact that the um, rear doors didn't exist and had very jazzy interiors as well. A bit more somber in the Peugeots. But yeah, excellent family transport, a really nice driving vehicle. Handling's not going to win any awards, but it's confident, it's sure-footed. The ride is just lovely for what is based on a van. Uh, it's a cracking bit of kit. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can head to the Hubnut store and buy lovely merchandise, some of which is even French related. And we shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Lion. <laughs>